hello everyone. Uh, sorry for some technical technical issue here, and uh, uh, we are presenting the hidden RC surfaces that control the droids. And uh, due to the COVID lockdown situation in Shanghai, uh, we are presenting this remotely. And sorry for inconvenience cost. And uh, here uh, we will introduce ourselves. And uh, uh, I'm Chi Danhe, and director researcher, chief researcher of Shaqi Security Lab. I'm the winner of multiple uh, Pontoon championships and the spoken at conferences at Black Hat, Defcon, Recon, Kansas West, Mossack, HITB, Power Community, and so on. Uh, so, Hello. Jun Tao. Hello, everyone. I'm Jun Tao Wu in Team Pangu. Most of my time focusing on mobile security and the program analysis, finding its vulnerabilities, and uh, keep track of the state of art of exploitation. Okay. Uh, so now uh, today's agenda is as follows. Uh, we will give an overview of the RC surfaces in Android. And uh, uh, secondly, we will introduce the different remote code execution bugs in the Android ecosystem that we found, including the loop pack bug in the Android AOSP, the image format bugs in the Samsung Android Chrome libraries, and the SPI image bugs in Samsung Notes, which have like uh, billions of downloads in the Google Play. Uh, Thirdly, we will dive into the dynamic binary fuzzing on how to find these bugs, uh, especially without source code access. And uh, the final part is a conclusion part. So uh, to give a brief overview, the remote code execution service on Android can be categorized as, as five types. Uh, the Wi-Fi attack surface is including bugs in the Wi-Fi protocol stack, uh, the Wi-Fi implementations, and the Wi-Fi chip drivers. And uh, there are some previous uh, excellent research on this, uh, like in the Broadcom chips. Uh, the NFC is uh, also a, a code execution surface in Android, including bugs in the uh, NFC portal stack and NFC software handling and uh, some like uh, intent handling uh, in NFC. Uh, the file format bugs are somehow old fashioned, but, uh, they, but are still live uh, even after so many years. Uh, previously, there are the very famous file format bugs in Android, the uh, stage fright bugs, and uh, I think most of you have heard about it. Uh, however, after uh, those years, uh, the, the bugs in the median server has like vanished, but uh, we are still seeing other file format bugs uh, that we will introduce later. Also, there are Bluetooth and baseband uh, bugs, including the uh, protocol imp implementation faults, and others, and uh, we will not uh, elaborate on it uh, today. So, uh, as I have uh, mentioned uh, above, uh, in this talk, we will focus on the file format bugs that we have found. So, uh, the file RC bugs still exist in Android. Uh, since the, like the introduction of 4G and 5G, and uh, the improvement of cameras, like uh, the, the phone, the today's phones may uh, ship with uh, uh, cameras, like which have the ability to process like uh, millions or billions of pixels. And uh, with, uh, uh, with the development of like uh, of, uh, TikTok, uh, Instagram, and people would like to share high definition images and videos. So uh, the Android and the Windows, they develop a high, a new high definition image formats and the complex video and the audio and the, uh, image file formats. And also, uh, as the BYOD is very popular these days, uh, the, uh, the corporate and enterprise networks, uh, they also have uh, some speci specific configuration file that is introduced in the Android to support uh, the company's needs or the IT admin's needs. Uh, we will go into the details later on. So for our first target, it's the uh, uh, lead pack Leap pack surface in the OSP. So, uh, what is uh, what is pack? Uh, what is uh, leap pack? The OS provides a way for users to configure a proxy auto configuration script. A proxy auto configuration script defines how web browsers and other user agents can automatically choose the appropriate proxy server, fetching a given URL. And uh, you can see that uh, it's defined in JavaScript. Uh, the whole uh, proxy configuration file is actually uh, an implementation for the function find proxy for URL that a given uh, URL and the host, uh, the function need to return how this uh, specific URL should be reached 
whether it should be accessed directly or it should go through a proxy. So uh, different uh, platforms, uh, different operating systems support the pack and they have the different implementations for handling the pack. Uh, Windows uses the JScript to pass the pack file. And previously, uh, Google Project Zero have an excellent research on uh, the pack handling that a Windows attacker can obtain remote code execution by uh, hijacking the dark pack domain to host a malicious pack file to uh, exploit the memory corruption bugs in the JScript. So uh, questions arise that uh, what's the situation for Android? Uh, in Android, uh, we know the most famous JavaScript engine or most widely used JavaScript engine is the V8 engine. The V8 is a complex and powerful attack surface in Android. Uh, so it's heavily sandboxed since it has uh, like, uh, it's a huge attack surface. The browser uh, V8 engine runs in an isolated application context. Uh, before 2017, we have a good old times when application web views are not isolated. Uh, we utilize this feature in mobile phone 2017 and uh, quickly it's killed in Android O that uh, our application web views is isolated like the, like the Chrome uh, ones. So uh, can you imagine there is still a remaining unisolated V8 in the platform application contest? Uh, it's too good to be true, but it yet exists. So um, now let's see how the pack file is processed in Android. Uh, there are different implementations in Android, uh, including Android 10, Android 11, and Android 12. And uh, uh, the bugs uh, uh, we found here is, is uh, including, uh, including uh, CVE 2020-0240, uh, CVE 2020-0224, and CVE 2021-0393. And uh, you can see it get uh, like high or critical ratings from Google. So, a uh, dedicated service, pack service, is exported in the packages uh, service pack processor uh, in AOSP. And uh, we can see that uh, uh, for, the for the network request uh, from, uh, for the network request, uh, it, uh, with the parameters host and the URL, it actually calls into pack native make proxy request. And uh, uh, the pack native make proxy request actually is backed by uh, pack native and uh, it uh, will cause to nat uh, native imp implementation which are in the libgi pack processor.so. And this SO implemented in C++ uh, actually wraps various calls to the V8. So uh, where is the proxy resolver V8 handle implemented in the uh, screenshot of the source of the snippet uh, posted here? So uh, let's dig deeper here and we can see the answer is the external Chromium lib pack and external V8. Uh, the final implementation that is called by Viper actually creates a V8 contest uh, in the process space of pack processor and evaluates the pack script file. And you can see in the left side of the, uh, of the snippet code, uh, the, for the incoming UI on the host, uh, uh, V8 contest is created and uh, the uh, function, the, the get, uh, the final proxy for URL function is retrieved and evaluated in the, in the V8 uh, contest. And there's a problem here that quickly arises that uh, uh, where is the corresponding weight source code? Is it in WebView or is it in a separate branch or separate repo? Uh, the answer is very, uh, interesting or very promising to an attacker that uh, uh, before the Android 11, a separate branch of V8 is maintained in the external V8 uh, repo in the AOSP. And uh, from the commit log here that we, we have a several in very interesting conclusion. The separate V8 repo has a patch gap, that, uh, which means that uh, end days also work. The resolver itself is in native code and might contain bugs. Uh, actually, it is also the case that uh, uh, there is some, somebody found some bugs here in the resolver rather than the uh, weight code. The weight itself does not run in isolated process. Uh, previously, previously uh, some people uh, reported uh, uh, some, end, some end days here and uh, it led to a minor change in the weight options 
uh, we can see a uh, no optimized uh, option is introduced. It occurs a uh, GIT box, which means that uh, since there's a, it is because that uh, if there's no optimization, uh, you can, the GIT feature is uh, uh, turned off and you cannot uh, exploit uh, the, the GIT box. But uh, only turning off GIT is far from enough because we still have other zero days and end days. For example, uh, CVE 2020-0240 is an integer overflow in the new fixed double array. Uh, the originally uh, chromium issue is 938251. And uh, the root cause of this bug is that the new fixed double array does not expect a negative length integer for the length, and it leads to an integer overflow. And it does not require GIT to uh, exploit this bug. And the root cause is also not in GIT. Uh, we can see on the right side of the screen, there is a POC uh, code snippet for this bug. That, uh, so to craft an exploit uh, in the pack processor, uh, we can create an array with, uh, with auto band length that, uh, uh, so that we can use it to get an arbitrary read write. And finally, to overwrite the WebAssembly code page. Uh, to uh, to write our shell code in the code page and finally jump to the shell code to get a code execution. Uh, the detail of the bug uh, is not going to be elaborated here, and if you are interested, you can consult the originally uh, issue. So the consequence of this exploit is that we got code execution in the platform application contest, which is uh, 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 somehow promising contest rather than the untrusted application contest or isolate application contest. Uh, fortunately for the user, uh, but unfortunately for the attacker is that the permission, the application permission of pack processor is limited. Uh, uh, by saying it's limited, I mean that it does not have like a read or write external storage permission, so it cannot access your photos. It does not have uh, SMS permission, it cannot access your contest. But still, it opens the way for attacker to like exploit further bugs because the platform app uh, contest uh, is uh, uh, good for the attacker to uh, try to exploit the drivers or other uh, services bugs to escalate privilege. So uh, here is a quick demo here to, to show the bug. So uh, we can see that uh, as soon as the uh, malicious pack URL is entered, uh, the, the, the shell quickly pops up, pops up and the attacker gets a reverse shell on the uh, currently newest on the, on the newest version at that time. And uh, of course, the bug has been reported and uh, patched by Google. It's a bug in the Android 10. Uh, so uh, we quickly saw some changes in the Android open source project that were introduced to, to, make, uh, to make it this bug. A new flag, SU's WebView pack processor, is introduced and uh, it switches, it uh, controls the switch between the pack WebView and pack native. A pack WebView now redirects the, the uh, pack uh, processing to system WebView, which means that it will directly use the weight bundle in the system WebView instead of a separate weight branch. And uh, the flag is by default true, which means that uh, in Android 11, pack native, pack native is never used. Uh, in the uh, screenshot here, and you can see that now the pack processors, uh, process, space, process maps now contain the web view code uh, instead of the originally uh, V8 uh, code. So in Android 12, uh, Google goes one step further and the switch is removed and only pack web view is used. 
but uh, a question still remains that the parsing still runs in the non-isolated context. Uh, here the screenshot demonstrates that uh, we use a, a, a zero day or a newest uh, weight bar to test uh, and we can see that the crashes is still in the pack processor itself rather than, rather than uh, uh, isolated application context. So here's all for, the, for our first uh, target, the pack sur surface, attack surface in the AOSP. Now I will go to the second attack surface the DNG and other image formats in the Sansum Querum library. And the, the first bug of the Querum library is found by Natalio Purchasero in 2015. And I believe uh, some of you have heard about this uh, research in the Querum because in 2020, Purchasero and I both contact, contact the father again in the Querum library. And we find uh, we did some research in the di from different code passes and different formats, and we found different bugs. Uh, the Project Zero's blog mentioned bars in the QMG code, QMG image, image format, and I found other bugs in the JPEG, GIF, DNG parsing. The QM is a quite complex binary with a lot of codecs, and in the uh, Sansum system partition, which means that it exists in, in billions of Sansum phones by default. Uh, the API reversing of the Sansum QM library is the first step for, for us to find bugs here. A uh, natural entry is in the stock uh, gallery applications. At, uh, you can see that the Chrome uh, codec interface is a Java wrapper for the Chrome codec. And the, uh, code, the, the parser will be called by image decoder decode file. And uh, when will Chrome codec be used and when will the Android scale be used? Uh, there are three uh, preconditions. Uh, the codec need to be presented the flag in just decode bounds need to be true, and the in, if preferred, QM codec flag needs to be true. So uh, when will these flags be true so that the QM codec uh, will, be, will be used? Uh, there, the answer is different for different image types, but uh, for all image types, uh, for some image types, uh, the, the flags are default to true for some Samsung proprietary uh, format. For other major formats like uh, JPEG, GIF, BMP, and others, it is set to true in some threads. For example, in the thumbnail threads, the face detection threads, and it's automatically triggered when the file is, uh, is added to inventory by media scan interns. For example, if you download the image from browser, uh, from, from emails, or from uh, receiving, uh, receiving or, send, or saving the message from uh, saving the image from MMS, and for other situations, the scale is using instead of Quorum. Uh, we are not interested in scale here, so uh, we will only consider the about the uh, aforementioned situations. So uh, to draw a conclusion, receiving the image triggers the library, and uh, the code is actually in background suddenly. So uh, to give, uh, to dig further, we go from the Java code to the native code. The Java code calls in the GNI functions, and the GNI function accepts a file pass and the byte array and returns a bitmap with pixel field. The metadata is retrieved by Chrome get image info from file, and it creates bitmap uh, based on the metadata. Uh, the metadata will tell the uh, color, the, it will try to decide the image type, uh, the width, the height, and other meta, mes meta uh, message uh, for the image. The Android bitmap log pixels function creates buffer depends on the RGB types and the, the, file, the image size, uh, image uh, wise, or others, other information. And the parsing now will dispatch it to QR decode image for different types. And uh, for example, in the uh, right side of the, of the presentation, you can see the code decompile code snippet that for different types, they have a decode JPEG, decode BMP, and other uh, functions code, and code passes. And the uh, parsing result is written to the buffer provided by bitmap log pixels. And finally, the Android bitmap unlock pixels finishes decoding and handles the bitmap back uh, upwards to the Java world. Uh, you can see from the IDA screenshot that this code is uh, rather complex, which means it's a very interesting target for fuzzing. Uh, to, if we want to fuzz this uh, codec, we need to draw a call flow of this uh, library, and uh, so to for summar for summarize, uh, you can see that uh, from the calls from GI entry, 
uh, to QRM get image info from file two, and uh, it creates Android bitmap and logs buffer, and the QR decode image writes a buffer, and finally the bitmap is returned. There is an interesting uh, uh, situation, interesting exception here is that for the DNG format. You can see that DNG is specially handled here by a, a specific uh, code parse. And uh, I, I, as I would like to say, I like to say that DNG is the first class citizen of the QRAM image code. Uh, it has a, a more complex code flow here and it's never delegated to scale for some, some custom, custom formats. Uh, for example, uh, in the right side of this presentation, we can see the, the parsing flow of the DNG images. Uh, for incoming uh, image file, if the extension is DNG, uh, it will call into QR pass metadata. And if the metadata is valid, and if the make field, uh, it's also the window field is Samsung, it will call into QR bitmap factory decode DNG preview. And if the, if the metadata is not valid, it will call into QRM bitmap factory decode file. And if the extension is not DNG, the current bitmap factory decode file will be called again to decide if the current get image, image uh, info from file thinks the file is a raw format. The, a raw format is, is a separate name for the DNG format. And if the answer is true, the current decode DNG file will be called. So uh, to, create, uh, to create a fuzzing harness, uh, Similar to the previous uh, CRAM example, we have a new uh, DNG harness for the uh, DNG parsing, and uh, uh, we will conduct fuzzing on this harness. And we, will, we will elaborate about it uh, more later on. So uh, we found several bugs, or actually tens of bugs in the CRAM, in the CRAM library, including CVE 2021, uh, 24346. And it's a typical integer overflow here, and you can see uh, uh, size field is retrieved from the image and uh, eight and it have uh, it is passed uh, to the constructor of the new of the array uh, by eight, multiplied by eight and uh, then the size is used as an a loop to the array and uh, it, there is an obvious uh, integral flow here found by fuzzing and also other bugs like cable flow OB writes by three. Uh, others in the JPEG parsing others. So uh, this is uh, the the story for the target two, including the bugs are found. And now I will hand, hand over to Jun Tao to talk about the target three here. Okay, thanks, Chida. Now after we dig into two known file formats, it's time to deep dive in. Can we find more similar vulnerabilities besides QMage JPEG? DNG and uh, etc. No more information on the web about private media files for sensing phones. So where will sensing use its unique format? From an application point of view, media files are commonly found in preview installed applications. And at the same time, from another point of view, system or some other privileged process can also handle media files. So let's find something interesting. When we look for a new attack surface based on the idea of meaning QMage format vulnerabilities, we review the past vulnerability meaning methods. We found something interesting in some dictionaries. For example, system media or the dictionaries of building application on the phone. In attention to QMage, there are files which is in SPI service format. In fact, Security researchers from Google Project Zero had discovered this file format before, which you can see it on their blog in the MM series. But they thought it had no attack surface and ignored it. However, that doesn't preclude us taking a great interest in these matters. You can see that these files are named all about system statues like battery, USB charging, and some others. From a common scenes of system designs, the system developers usually put files of the same type or some similar types together. Therefore, we found the after we have found the relative vulnerabilities of QMage, 
We believe the SPI is maybe also another sensing special image for, for fire format, and it may ha have such a problem. Next, we need to determine the, our attack surface. Unlike QMage, we had uh, no more information about SPI format. So we decided to choose the old fashioned way. We have done a lot of reverse engineering in the Java application level and the native level of the system. And uh, we found uh, some interesting strings and uh, some related functions about SPI. In system binaries and uh, function libraries, we found the LPN and the LabMate shared library. The LPN, it is actually responsible for some logic processing when the Android device is plugged in. And the uh, LabMate is a library which provides relative processing functions. In fact, when we reversed here, we can already understand the name of the SPI file we talked before are corresponding to the operation to this processing, like charging batteries or reboot. It is actually the picture which is displayed when something phone is plugged in and exactly. But unfortunately, we can't do anything about this startup process. The file path it used is hard coded in the code. And all we can do is change the picture, which is displayed in the charging model. Therefore, we continue to reverse the relative applications of the media files. And we found that the different applications have the same, some same native libraries, which names contains span. It is actually the underlying support of the SPAN SDK, or we can say that is the SPAN framework. SPAN is the highlight of sensing mobile phone, and it can support you to do something like hand write text, hand drive pictures. That's why so many preview installed applications support it. And after we classify the functions of each application, we choose sensing nodes as our target because it has a very clear way of passing in attacked vectors. It is for sensing special node file formats, SDOC and the SDOC. So we did a detailed reverse engineering of sensing nodes. On the right, of, right side of the screen, you can see the SDOC format file opens in XXD hex dump model. It is a composed compressed file containing information about other media files like SPI, SPP, and uh, some others. You can see exactly the string of SPI is already included in the XDOX file. And on the left side of the screen is the parsing logic in Java and the native level. When you open or oh, save a SDOX format document, it will first perform an operation similarity similar to the curve compressed. And the second if there is a uh, image information in hand drive format, uh, which is actually the SPI in the document, it will call its unique parsers, SPAN screen coder decoder to convert its bitmap and uh, parsing it like a SPI. So the logic in Java layer will finally call native function to code SPI to parsers the bitmap of the hand drive picture. Then at the native layer, its parsing logic is similar to the usual media file parsing. The function decode file will call read matter RGB and the performance a series of processing. So the logic is clear here. The SPI is a built-in file format for stocks and its metadata is retrieved by read meta ARGB. It will create bitmap based on these metadata, and the JNI function also accepts a file path or a byte area, and returns an Android bitmap with pixel field. And uh, Android bitmap log pixels create buffers depend on RGB type passing dispatched to meta decode for different types and your bitmap on block pixels finish the decoding. Compared with the parsing logic of QMage, you can find that something 
has some similarity in the processing logic of file parsing. So similar, similar to many ordinary file parsers, the point of parsing basically lies in some boundary values like wide, height, and or the number of material, the index of material, or the size in the material. And the sensing likes to use logs, which help us to convert it logic quickly. Therefore, we focus on the reverse analysis of the analytic logic for the bound, key bound values and uh, changing some key bytes to see as if the code is running correctly. To our surprise, we easily found the uh, out of bounds right vulnerability. This leads us to believe the, that this piece of code is on test and we found the downs of vulnerabilities based on fuzzing. And the fuzzing work is similar to the previous operation in community part. We also wrote a harness to load the function library, which is responsible for parsing the SPI logic and let it run in our fuzzing tool. The so specific detail will be discussed in the following pages. And now let's take a look at some of vulnerabilities here. The first case is CV 2021-25496. It happens in a code snap about segment parsing logic. And it is actually a function table hijacking vulnerabilities caused by an area index out of bounds. The controllable variable V4 is used to calculate the index of the area offset B4138. The offset point actually points to an area of functions, which is on the right side of the screen. And the opposite will pass the address of a function to V11. And finally, in the next passing logic, it will call different point functions according to different fragments. And you can see V11 is used as a function point. We will just need to make it point to the position of the target function and then use the opposite and construct the parameters at the same time, then you will give it a primacy of execution of the function. And the next case is CV 2021-25498. This vulnerability is actually a hijacking of striker internal function point. You can see it happens in that code snap too. The argument V3 of made the COPA CB model is actually a structure that stores the contents of the object file. For, for convenience, you can consider it as basically controllable content. The V3 will pass to the read function and the yes, struggle internal function point will finally be executed in conditional statement. But the trouble here is the parents executed by this function are defined. And if you want to use this, you need to find a better way. Well, that's what the SPI spot researchers. Next, the Chidan will continue to give you the speech of the following contents. Hey, San Jintao. Uh, so since the time is ticking and I will go a bit farther, a bit faster here. Uh, so to find the previous mentioned box, we need some sort of uh, fuzzing uh, to, to, to do the bug hunting. And uh, the state of fuzzing is the coverage guided fuzzing. And you know that uh, fuzzing needs some sort of feedback. And the coverage information is the key. Uh, for source code, for fuzzing with source code access, we have compiler instrumentation uh, support, like the ones in GCC or LVM. And for, if you do not have the comp, uh, source code access or, or, or compiler support, you can use hardware based uh, like processor trees, like Intel PTs. However, they are not very stable and not very mature to use. And in our situation, we use binary based uh, static rewrite and a dynamic tracing a fuzzing approach. Uh, for fuzzing with, with source code access, you have uh, compiler instrumentations like the very uh, typical AFL implementation that uh, uh, it insert code at, at edge transfers and record coverage uh, at edge transfers in the shared memory. Uh, current location is gener have a random generated and the shared memory records the, uh, control, the, the control flow transfers and uh, the inputs that triggers new uh, local states, which means it touches new code, is added to the queue, and uh, uh, inputs that have no use are dropped. Uh, so uh, we have a very 
we are very familiar, familiar with open source software fuzzing and there are tons of use cases, studies here and tools to use. However, for closed source uh, binary fuzzing, like the previous box we, we, we discussed, there are a few real world cases that we can refer to and especially for mobile binaries. So in today's talk, we like to fill the gap between the theory and actions. So first thing first is that so uh, which one do we need to choose for binary fuzzing, static rewrite or dynamic tracing? Uh, our conclusion here is that uh, static rewrite is an option for Android binaries, but it has many uh, disadvantages. For example, the ARM AX64 support for Android binaries is, is immature, at least for uh, publicly accessible tools. That, uh, they have runtime crashes, incomplete coverages, especially for complex binaries. And uh, also, uh, fuzzing on phones is, uh, you, you have many issues that uh, on, if you fuzz on phones, you have overheating issues, low performance issues, or even physical breaks issues. It is, uh, it is of course, uh, more convenient and uh, more affordable and cheaper to fuzz on servers, especially on x, x86 servers rather than ARM servers. So a conclusion here is that uh, uh, rewriting ARM binaries and fuzz them on ARM uh, phones is not a very acceptable solution that does not scale. And of course you can try the ARM servers, but uh, we, did not, we did not test here. And I think it's, uh, it is somehow a bit expensive on AWS. So it, uh, it's an open question here that we can discuss later. Uh, if you choose a dynamic tracing approach, you still have some uh, decision that need to make. Uh, you, do, you, do you want to use a trap or debugger approach? Uh, it is great in macOS format fuzzing as dem demonstrated by Project Zero. And it's also uh, good for doing quick dirty tests and fuzzing in the service APIs, but have the same problem that it does not scale. So finally, we choose the QMU approach for the dynamic tracing fuzzing. The QMU, you know that QMU provides a dynamic binary translation where translates the block. Uh, the TCG, Tiny Code Generator, uh, has uh, OPS as IR, and for target machine code, it translates the uh, target machine code to, uh, uh, via front-end to, OP, to, OP, to OPS IR, and uh, the OPS IR is translated by backend to actual host machine code and, and executed. The whole flow is uh, illustrated here that uh, for each uh, target PC, a translated block counter is looked up, and if the block is already uh, translated and is cached, the translated code is directly executed. And uh, for, uh, for untranslated uh, blocks, uh, the, uh, the, code, the block is, uh, will, be, will go through the uh, TB generated code and uh, it will uh, translate it into a uh, new block and uh, change it to existing block and uh, the translated code is executed. And for uh, synchronized interrupts, process IOs, and uh, there's no uh, more uh, translated block exceptions, uh, the exception handling routine is called. So uh, for QMU approach, we can insert the coverage collection uh, via TB hooking. And they, there are some implementations, uh, some patches in the AF, AFL++ and AFL Unicom uh, into the QMU code. And uh, so that the coverage is, uh, is recorded when the TB is executed and translated. Uh, so for QMU approach, we still have some options here that uh, uh, QMU Unicom provides a raw interface to run machine code, that it can run ARM code at a given memory address of given content. It also uh, pro it provides callback and memory interfaces for end users and developers, which means that it does not have support for syscalls or AFL in the, or ERF initialization or loading, and the user need to implement them himself. The QMU user, on the other hand, reuses the host operating system environment to support different instruction set. And it translates and forwards syscalls to host kernel with the same syscall interfaces or ABI, so that uh, you can use QMU user to execute uh, Android ARM AX64 harness on X64 Linux server. Uh, so to draw, uh, to, to give a more uh, uh, clear illustration here, you can see that uh, for QMU uh, system that uh, uh, when, when it executes the binary, it actually have uh, the CPU emigration part, the IO interface part, the peripheral model part, and the flow control part. The QMU user approach actually delegates the IO interfaces and the uh, peripheral models to 
uh, it's translated and forwarded to host operating systems. However, for QMA user approach, you need to implement the uh, syscalls yourself, uh, like implementing a provided kernel and even mem uh, managing the uh, memory and, and uh, implementing the peripheral models yourself. So, uh, okay. Uh, so uh, to draw a conclusion here, that QMU Unicom is uh, uh, faster than QMU user uh, if you implement the syscalls yourself with the cost of engineering effort, but QMU user is fairly, fairly enough to conduct fuzzing with a proper harness. And the screenshot here is that we use the QMU Unicom approach and QMU user approach to conduct fuzzing on the above mentioned uh, harness. So the fuzzing input is actually a very common image case image seeds in the AFL images. And we prepare the relevant screen partition in the environment for the QMU user to run the Android binaries. The fuzzing it runs at 200, sec, uh, 200 seconds, uh, 200 per second per core and 6,000 uh, 6, uh, per server. That will come with like 7,000 crashes here and the box is all dimensioned above. Uh, so for crash tracking, that uh, there's a problem in that uh, Cumul does not reflect reflect crashes to host, and you will need a custom unwinder and back tracer. Uh, we, we here use some uh, memory sanitizers like deep dislocator and the QASAN. And the QASAN is especially useful. So uh, here's uh, uh, the part for the dynamic uh, dynamic fuzzing, and for other real world cases, we also found a large part of critical. Uh, high severity bugs in the Samsung Simba library and Xiaomi's library and other uh, vulnerabilities. But uh, due to the disclosure process, we will not discuss it more here. Uh, <clears throat> finally, we have some references on the uh, tools and the uh, codes, and you can read them more if you are interested. So uh, here's all of our slide, and uh, do you have any questions? And the relevant POC and the fuzzing harness and fuzzing script will be available at, uh, the, at my GitHub uh, after the talk. Thank you.